Now, Nike has officially ended their partnership with Tiger Woods. And every once in a while, I like to touch base on a few things that happens culturally off the court because it tends to affect what's on the court. But Nike is kind of going through an interesting phase right now, sort of a transition. A lot of their legacy acts are sort of, I don't want to say running out of relevance, but they're, they're not at the forefront of the type of real estate Nike's trying to grab. And when I say real estate, I mean the youth. We see Nike make sure that they have Zion Williams fall under their Jordan brand umbrella. And also, John ja Morant, even though he went through his legal troubles, Nike still backs him. There's a reason for that. They're trying to make sure that their brand is in the subconscious of a newer generation that's coming up. But with a lot of their legacy acts, including Stephen Curry, who used to be on Nike before he blew up, we see Nike mess up on their renewal pitch for him. They accidentally left Kevin Durant's name on the slide. And Kevin Durant, outside of the court, he's not really that marketable. He's even had an incident where he was asked about his KD-16s and he acted pretty nonchalant about it. Nike has had this issue with him since he first came in the league. KD mostly cares about what goes on on the court. He just, he's a baller. Tell me about these shoes you got on today. Just a little pair of kicks, man. It's the 16th installment, so it's nothing to be too, you know, call home about, brother. It's just, it is what it is. It's KD's, you know, you just know they're going to be on my feet every year. Appreciate you. KD's just a hooper for real. But, but things are really interesting over there, even with Kyrie Irving. He had one of the best-selling shoes at Nike, and he had the attention of the youth. And when I say youth, I'm pretty much referring to children that's in elementary all the way up until, I would say, senior year of high school. But that demographic is really what Nike is after. And just having their stars kind of be a little nonchalant about their product, not as relevant. And also, at the same time, they have a lot of competition coming in. We see Skechers entering the marketplace, snagging up stars that play for big markets like Julius Randle out of New York, Nikolai Jokic, the league reigning NBA Finals MVP, signing with a Chinese brand, 361, LaMelo Ball getting snagged up by Puma, and even Adidas continuing to make name on the marketplace, getting Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard, Derrick Rose, James Harden, Anthony Edwards. It's just a lot of moving parts going on right now, but Kanye West has spoke about this. Even though he does bug out from time to time, he was a person that had his own shoe with Nike. And he does have some insights on their business model and what they're really about. You guys check it out. Think about like Nike. Nike is as popular as Apple, but it's company number 321. Apple's number one. App Nike's on defense, it's Whoa. not on offense. Whoa. Right, because, because niggas love Nike. Right, so Nike is used for political influence because it's not about the money you make, it's about the position you have. Mm. So when they signed me to Gap, it wasn't to raise a stock price, it was to be able to be like, to tell the Fortune 500 companies that do deals with China, to tell them, hey, Gap has influence in the underserved communities. Kanye West does bug out from time to time, but damn, he be dropping some gems sometimes. And Nike has looked very defensive over the past 20 years. They don't really have any big name product they just reintroduced other than the Kanye West Yeezys. That's probably their newest concept shoe that they had people go crazy for. But they have gone on the splurge of just signing people that are relevant and have a lot of hype among the youth like Ja Morant and Zion Williams, which pretty much so far has backfired for Nike. Those guys are not as relevant as it's supposed to be in the NBA right now. Zion due to his weight issues and Ja Morant, all his off the court antics. But remember, they were quickly to hop off the Kyrie Irving train, but they stayed with Ja Morant, even though he had multiple incidents showing off guns and acting a fool. But the infamous check mark does have a place in pop culture relevance. As we've seen, they told Kanye West, they don't sign people that aren't athletes just to see the success he had with Adidas, then turn around and sign Drake. They were late to the party. And as far as Drake, he's another figurehead of the whole Nike team that's kind of dwindling down in relevance. Yes, he's still a big cultural figure, but when it comes to that youth demographic from elementary school all the way up until 18, he's not actually the person they're really looking up to. That's the main demographic year in, year out. Nike wants to capture them at a young age to have them eventually become adult consumers for the rest of their lives. That's their business model. And politically, just like how Kanye West said, they do have real estate in that realm, as we've seen it play out with Colin Kaepernick. 
And with all those Muhammad Ali type imagery commercials that they had for him during the last election cycle, Nike does have prime influential real estate to provide politically. So what Kanye is talking about is no bullshit. Again, he does bug out from time to time, but he sprinkles a few gems in there. And going back to their legacy acts, even Kobe Bryant before his death, he had a meeting already scheduled a week after he died to go over his prototype shoe. He had plans on leaving Nike. The prototype is out there. He had his own technology shoe and pretty much the relationship with Kobe and Nike, it was done already. And even after his death, it kind of spilled out because they were still making his shoes and his wife, you know, she made that post on social media condemning the Gianna Kobe Bryant shoes that was released. Somebody was reselling it. She couldn't believe Nike was letting people exploit Kobe's death for profit. It took over a year for that family to sign back on with Nike. So they are at a very interesting crossroads, even though they do hold the number one position in the athletic footwear and just athleisure wear department. And a lot of those issues really stem from their legacy acts. How much can they actually hold up Nike's relevance, even though they haven't really released any dynamic products in over 20 plus years? They're still releasing Air Jordans that were designed, what, in the 1980s, 90s? It's not like they're ahead of the curve in a way because they told Kanye West they don't sign people that are not athletes. Just for him to go to Adidas, I mean, if you look at the charts, Adidas from 2012 to 2014, they had 14 billion in sales, which was stagnant year in, year out. Kanye comes in, they go up to 16 billion in 2015, then 19 billion in 2016. And in 2017, it jumped up 21%. Again, Adidas told Kanye they don't sign people that are not athletes just for him to leave and bring all that growth to a whole nother company. That's a major miss because Adidas in their whole entire history never had back-to-back -back years in 2018-2019 of just 9% growth until Kanye West went over there and they were also at the same time developing a Boost technology shoe they kind of launched Kanye's Yeezy Boost along with their other Boost models at the same time, and they killed it. They killed it so much, it kind of opened Pandora's box, and that's why you see all these new Chinese companies coming in. Reebok relaunching their basketball department. Skechers launching a basketball department. Puma and other companies not scared to throw money at influencers and designers outside of the, the typical designer scope. Like, they'll go out and get somebody like Pharrell or somebody like Virgil when he was alive. So it is what it is. Nike at this point, they're still number one, but product wise, they haven't really dropped anything crazy to actually keep that spot. But they're sort of entrenched in the, I would say in the American ecosystem. But these are the beginning of the transitional years for their mega stars. I don't think LeBron James panned out the way they thought he was going to pan out as far as being the greatest player of all time. All the marketing and media influences, it's just not working on the masses to convince them that he is the GOAT. And as the more years go by, younger generations come up, they're not going to care as much about Michael Jordan. So it'll be very interesting to see how Nike pivots in the next upcoming years. And that shows you the importance of players like Zion Williams and Ja Morant. They got to get their act together and they got to start winning on the court to maintain their relevance. And as far as pop culture, Kanye bought something to Nike that Drake doesn't. Innovation. Drake can just only wear the product. He's not going to come out with an innovative shoe. That's just not his lane. Nike, in a way, purchased Drake's musical algorithm just to have him almost like a walking billboard. If he's advertised on Spotify or any other music streaming service, you'll see him wearing a Nike logo. Or like his laugh now, cry later music video, the whole thing was a Nike ad. But again, we'll see how it works out with their legacy acts. Tiger Woods departing from the brand. Kobe, if he was alive, he would have departed from the brand also. So interesting times for Nike.